Hello, it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today's layout is for Mixed Media Frenzy. And this week we have chosen a stunning layout to scrap lift. This is it up on the screen now. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I am going to stick to it as closely as I physically, humanly and possibly can um, because I just saw it and fell in love with it. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna use the same color scheme and everything. So I've pulled out loads of bits from my stash that you can see here that I'm hoping to use on this layout. Um, as always, it's um, Friday, so it's our Mixed Media Frenzy Hop. So the girls are taking part with me today and you will find links to their channels in my description box. So every Friday we get together and um, we pick a layout to either scrap lift or a sketch to be inspired by and all of us um, create a layout based on the same thing. Um, so like I said, their, ch their channel links are in the description box below. So do please pop on over to their channels and have a look at their videos as well. I always love to see how we've all got the same inspiration piece to work from and yet all of our layouts turn out completely different. It's really, really interesting. I love seeing our different takes on things. So I'm going to get cracking with my layout. I've pulled out some um, film strip there. That's by Tim Holtz and I love this stuff. I think I've only ever used it once or twice before. I've got a whole roll of it. So I was really, really glad to be able to use some of it on this layout. So just like the original, I'm gonna have a strip going down the center. Um, I originally start off with two photos and they are printed three by four with a white border on them so they're technically just slightly larger than three by four now um, but I do end up changing that for three photos as in the original because I just felt it worked better when it came to placing my butterflies and things so for now you'll see two but that does change. I've got this stamp set here and they look pretty clean so I'm guessing I'd never used them before so you see just I tested them out on an A4 piece of card just to make sure they printed okay and when I used an acrylic stamping block for the first two so the circle ones and then I've come in with a couple of wood mounted stamps um, just to add a bit more detail to my background. So if you subscribe to my channel and watch a lot of my videos, you'll know I love to have a lot of texture and dimension on my page. And um, this layout is looking pretty flat at the moment. So I need to do something with this to make me happy. <laughs> um, it's just too flat. As much as I love stamping, it needs something. So my original plan was to smush some ink through this Tim Holtz stencil to add color to my background, but it wasn't coming out as crisp as I wanted it. So um, instead I'm going to use some white texture paste and I'm mixing in this gorgeous metallic minty coloured acrylic paint um, and that's going to give a bit more texture to my background which makes me a little bit happier. So I just tested that out on some paper first just to see how it looked, if I liked it and I'm glad I did because I didn't like the smushing of the paint through the stencil, it just wasn't working. So um, the texture paste works much, much better. The only trouble I have with doing this is sometimes if you mix colour in with white texture paste it really dulls the colour down and makes it kind of a pastel-y colour um, but because this acrylic paint was quite a pastel shade anyway it's actually held up quite well um, and hasn't really lost its colour so it worked really really well. Um, so I've smushed some of that through that Tim Holtz stencil just in various areas on the page um, just a bit randomly really, just trying to make sure it doesn't look too sort of square and blocky. Um, so I tried to kind of vary the shapes that I did my stenciling in. And then I've used the same acrylic paint there to add some mint coloured splatters to my background. Now I want to add some white splatters, so I've watered down some white gesso um, and I'm just, same thing with a paintbrush, adding some splatters. Now on the original, I highly suspect they have added some white gesso to their background. Um, in, in a close up, you can kind of see it. There is definitely some white there, but I did not want to smush white gesso on my craft cardstock. <laughs> um, firstly, I'm not brave enough. And secondly, I've tried doing it before and I just don't, it never works. It never looks good. Um, and I just don't like it. And I end up binning my background every time. So I avoided doing that, but 
in order to try and bring some white in I've gone with those splatters instead and then this is a black acrylic paint I'm using here again I've watered it down to add some splatters and then I'm just squeezing the bristles of my paintbrush um, so that it drips down onto my page from height to add a bit more interest with some larger splatters there and as you can see, whenever I do splatters, I always make a mess of my desk. So a quick um, tidy up halfway through there. Now these butterflies I got in the range a while ago. So they are kind of stickers on some sort of frosted, almost like a vellum. Um, I think they're meant for windows, if I'm honest. I think they're window stickers, but they are beautiful and they were perfect and I mean absolutely perfect for this layout I couldn't have found a better product to use um, I did actually buy some butterfly stamps specifically for this layout but I have found these butterflies in my stash and I just thought they were perfect so I wanted to have some white shining through them like the original layout and I didn't want to stick them directly to my background um, because I would lose a lot of dimension there and um, like I said I love to have dimension on my layouts so these butterflies provided the perfect opportunity for me to add some dimension so by backing them in the oh excuse my cat walking across my desk there uh, he'd come in the window um, where was I yeah so by adding that white card to the back of those butterflies now I can use some foam pads behind those to raise them up and get that dimension I was looking for and you'll also notice that I'd taken a break and printed off my photo a third time and cut them down a bit smaller. Um, and that's just because it made the placement of the butterflies look a bit nicer, um, less kind of corners to fill in. So um, yeah, I've changed to three photos. And I've also just used a bit of sequin waste there. Um, sometimes you'll find it's called punchinella. I love using this stuff on my layouts. I've used it as a stencil and brushed some black distress ink through it. Now that's called black soot and I love that doing that. Um, it's just added a bit more kind of a grungy feel to my layout. Um, and as I had the sequin waste out, it seemed rude not to use it. So I am adding some in, just sticking out behind my photos. I'm just gonna do a little bit on each side, sorry, on one side of each photo. And I'm just sticking that down with some double-sided sticky tape. And then I'm gonna come in with my craft foam. This is self-adhesive, I love this stuff. It's so easy to work with, just like that. It's stuck down and I'm gonna put that behind all my photos to raise them up. And this is where I'm gonna start building that dimension I was talking about. Um, I'm not a fan of flat layouts. I know they look beautiful and they work for most people, but I just, for me, I need to have lots of texture and dimension going on. So um, we've got the foam behind the photos and I will do the same thing with the butterflies and that just helps just to give it a bit more interest and another level to the layout. So I'm gonna overlap these photos exactly the same as they are in the original. But that third photo there that will sit on top, I'm gonna add a bit more foam to one side um, because the left hand side will already be raised up on top of the other photo that is already raised up. Um, if that makes sense, I needed a second layer of foam behind that one side of it. So that's those stuck down in place. I can now work on my butterflies. So I'm going to have the bottom of that one flat just because I want to tuck it behind my photos. And the top of the wings I'm raising up on foam and it's just bringing in a lot more dimension to the page. Um, and now I've got the three photos, I am much happier with the placement of these butterflies. I've got less gaps to try and fill in now. They all slot in so nicely, whereas before, with just the two photos, it was leaving kind of right angled gaps and I would have to have put flowers and things in and uh, it's just too much faffing for me. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure I would have liked the end result. So by printing that third photo, the placement of the butterflies is much more to my taste so um, it's just made it a lot more appealing to me. So now I've got these paper flowers, I think they're paper anyway, they must be because I paint them. <laughs> um, these paper flowers in my stash, I have had these for ages and I very very seldom use them. Um, I'm not a massive fan of them if I'm honest because although I've been banging on saying I love dimension on my layouts, these add a lot of dimension um, and that's going to make 
filling albums tricky because within sort of four or five albums, the uh, sorry layouts, this would fill an album because they are quite bulky. So I do very rarely use them, but there's a flower on the original and I wanted to stick to that. And it gave me an excuse to use some of them, I guess. So I have stuck a large one and a small one on this layout in the corner there. Now I've pierced a hole because they have wire on the back of them. So I've pierced a hole so that they can go through my layout. And then you'll see I taped the backs down. Um, then I decided I wanted a thread cluster underneath like the original has. So I had to pull the tape back off and peel them back out to stick that thread under and then just went about pushing them back through and taping them down again. And I'm now coming back in with that mint coloured metallic acrylic paint. Now that's just from Hobbycraft in the UK. Um, it's just a really cheap, I think it was probably two pounds if that. I'm just painting that directly onto that flower there to bring in a nice pop of green in the bottom left corner. So it just takes a moment to do that. I kind of go over each petal twice um, because the first sort of layer um, you could see the white of the flower showing through so just keep going over it until I'm happy that there's enough colour on that and then I decide I want to pop another flower up at the top to balance it out a bit and I'm just going to use one of those smaller ones again uh, excuse my head popping in of just checking because these flowers are so dimensional and the, the petals all kind of curl around each other so I just wanted to make sure that each petal is covered in that paint um, and obviously as I've turned my page around I've seen some white spots on that other flower so I'm just filling those in as well and then I'm going to water that paint down and just add a few more splatters because now I've got my photos and those large butterflies stuck down a lot of the kind of splatters and mixed media work I've done has been covered up so I'm just adding some more splatters there and of course I'm going to come in and do the same with the black um, I don't bother with the white because I've got that white behind the butterflies now that, that just brings a nice touch of white to the background um, so I don't bother with more black, uh, sorry, more white splatters but I do make sure I add some more black ones and some more large splatters as well can't beat getting messy fingers when you're making a mixed media layout and I think I've still got black under my nails now <laughs> it's um, quite difficult to get out oh and third hand has appeared I've got my little helper with me clearly so I'm just going to dab up some of that excess paint and make sure that's dry before I do anything else. And to be honest, I don't really add a lot more to this layout, I don't think. I love how this is looking so far. I love how closely to the original I've managed to keep. Um, I almost bought a pen in then and added some doodling, but decided instead I would do some machine stitching. So I've done a straight stitch all the way around the outside of the layout and then I've gone over in certain areas with a zigzag stitch and decided I wanted to add another flower. I had a gap between the corner of two of the photos where they met that I needed to fill in so I've um, put another flower there and I'm just going to open out the petals a bit more just to make sure that gap is filled um, and I'm going to add a, another black thread cluster to the top behind the single mint coloured flower just to help balance that page out a little bit more. And I'm not very good with thread clusters, I'll admit. Um, with my metallic threads, I love doing it because I just wrap it around my fingers and they keep the shape really, really well. But my normal cotton threads don't tend to do that as nicely. So I, instead of wrapping it around my fingers, I kind of try and pinch it between my fingers. Um, makes it look a bit messier and sort of not so uniform um, but these are probably two of the best thread clusters I've ever done I was really happy with these ones actually oh and this is where I made my paint all black so I could not be bothered to get up and change my water on my desk I don't know if this is just a thing amongst crafters um, I recently put a thing in one of our UK Facebook groups about bins um, it, it seems to be a really popular thing that us crafters hate emptying our bins and we just keep them full and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until it's literally overflowing. Well, I'm just as bad with my water. Uh, I'm really lazy with changing my water. So I went to water my paint down then to add some more splatters and ended up turning it black. So I had to soak that up and start again. Um, and then whilst I was adding my black splatters just now, I managed to 
dollop a big bit of black paint on my white flower. Um, so I had every intention of this flower staying white, but now half of it was splodged with black paint. I've had to come in and paint the whole flower. It wasn't my initial plan, but it's okay. It was a color that's in the layout anyway. So it just means I've got one of each color down in that cluster. And I think now I'm almost done, just trying to decide on some finishing touches. I've got these enamel stickers here that I've had for ages, just um, cheap from a craft shop. In fact, it's not even a craft shop, it's a shop in the UK that has a tiny craft section. Um, I'm just adding a few of those in around the edge of my photos. And then I'm gonna finish up with some jewels. So I've got a big pack of jewels here, they're all multicolored. So I just take some time to pick out a few black ones and some white ones and then I'm going to use my glossy accents to stick those down um, which is easier said than done because my glossy accents was really clogged and I was trying with a pin to unclog it and I thought it had worked and then I tried to use it and there was nothing coming out and I knew if I kept squeezing I was going to end up with half a tub of glossy accents on my layout um, so I took a while to try and unclog that but it is my kind of go-to preferred medium for adding things like sequins and jewels to a layout because I just find it a bit stronger than PVA glue. So I think we're finally there. I've finally unclogged the glossy accents. I'm starting to wonder if storing it upside down might be a good idea. I'm not sure if that would help or not. I used to store it with a pin in it permanently to stop it clogging, but then the pin just turned rusty after a while. So. Yeah, I need to find a, a better solution for this because it always does clog and it's quite frustrating every time I go to use it, having to unclog it. Oh yes, my title. So it got to this point in my layout and I was like, right, I've got my jewels on, I'm done. And then I realised, oh, I've got no title. And there's no rule that says you have to have a title on a layout, but I thought there was a space down that bottom right corner. So I found some foam stickers that I had and I've added the word smile. And that is my finished layout. So thank you very, very much for joining me today. Please do remember to hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more of my work. And as I mentioned earlier, you will find the links to all the other ladies' channels in my description box below. Um, and if you wanna join us, we are on Facebook. We have a Facebook group, you can find it. It's called Mixed Media Frenzy and I'll pop a link to that in the description box as well. Um, so until next time, bye.